Welcome to Pale Rider TV. You know, I always wondered about driver retention. It's not rocket science. All these major carriers are having issues keeping drivers. Well, not just mega carriers. I think a lot of carriers are having issues keeping drivers. But are they doing anything to retain them? Well, I don't believe it's too much like rocket science. So we're going to a few things here. Got this story from Freight Waves. There we go. Or I don't know if we're going to cover all these. We're just going to go over a few of them. Maybe I don't know. We'll see how long this article is. But it's from Freight Waves. And uh, it's dated today, the 22nd of February. Four driver recruitment practices for improving retention. How drivers or how carriers can find and keep good drivers. And this article is from, I got off freight waves, but the article sells from Conversion Interactive Agency. But like I said in the beginning, driver retention shouldn't be rocket science. When was the last time your company hired a new driver only to see them quit a few months later? It happens a lot. The reality is when drivers quit, they tend to leave within the first six months of employment. Whether the driver was the wrong fit or they were unhappy with the day-to-day -day realities of the position, it didn't work out and now the company is back to square one. No matter how many truck drivers a carrier hires, the same problem will keep happening if the business doesn't change its strategies and address why previous drivers left in the first place. Exactly why. They don't, a lot of them don't even care why the drivers left in the first place. So just replace them with a fresh body, a fresh person sitting in that seat, holding on to that steering wheel. Luckily, in making a few changes to implement the right strategies during recruitment can help reach the right candidates where they are, establish a trust basic relationship from the beginning and support a driver's long term success through continuous investment, ultimately helping to keep good employees. A conversion interactive agency, a strategic recruitment advertising agency. And here comes the rocket science centered on helping fleets hire and retain their drivers. Do they really need a big company like that? To, uh, and, and people data analysis, a retention focused agency centered on data shared what they learned about current recruitment marketing and retention trends in their 2022 driver recruiting and retention annual report. See? And turn it into rocket science. They don't have to be rocket science. It's very simple. I'll get my thoughts at the end of this article. What I say is probably the three things most important in driver retention. Freightwave sat down with Priscilla Peters, Vice President of Marketing and Conversion Interactive Agency, and Scott, PDA's Vice President of Operations to learn about four essential recruitment practices that carriers are overlooking that could improve retention. All uh, right, here we go. Here we go. Create a marketing strategy. One of the most common factors that carriers lack is a strategic marketing plan based on their target driver personas, according to Peters. Uh, these days, when drivers are not behind the wheel, they're scrolling through our live feeds. That's right, these digital spaces where potential clients are engaging with brands and where recruiters should be focusing their marketing skills. Social media, yeah, I agree. It's a big thing about that. Videos and digital media, instead of trying to hire truckers off of a little magazine, that usually ends up on the uh, bathroom floor. Uh, 
According to the report, video content converted the most driver leads on social media in 2022 with vertical ad formats. I think you're talking about TikTok and uh, YouTube Shorts. So, um, 70 percent of drivers said online reviews from other drivers influence the most when choosing a career that's why these youtubers uh go to these companies they start recruiting for the company they're at hopefully the company will pay them and everything and i know when i was at cattle Arc in central holland i didn't try to recruit anybody i just didn't do any recruiting videos well maybe one back in the day but i didn't i just let the company speak for itself or whatever if somebody asked me about i would give them the information but i didn't go push it but they did uh reimburse me if uh, anybody used my name when they uh got hired on there at cal arkham central holland and yeah so you follow the data I'm talking about getting all gathering all this data together after building and implementing a strategy a carrier must also follow through to monitor how it's performing guessing how well a company's strategy is working doesn't cut it what guessing following the performance data is critical to make the best decision for oh, see we're going with all this data they're going to go by the data instead of going out and hands-on interviewing drivers they're going to use all this data. Cares need detailed reporting, analytics, and metrics to recruit smarter and retain better. Come on, man. I, I'm not liking this article right here too much. Hard metrics help carriers make informed decision using real time data, understanding what's working and what's not, and reach the drivers they are more likely to retain. Why don't you just ask them? Why don't you just? Call them into the office and ask them how they're doing, why they quit, and all this other stuff. Prioritize communication. Yes, communication is very important also. Trust is, is often said to be hard to gain and easy to lose. For truck drivers, this seems to be true. 53% of drivers told us in a recent driver survey that the experience they're receiving when they're hired is not the same as what they were sold in the recruiting process. There you go. These recruiters, they get a commission on how many people they sign on, making false promises. I've seen it in the 28 years I was in the trucking industry. I've seen a lot of recruiters give a lot of false promises just to get people to sign up. It's uh, disgusting. As in any situation, honest communication builds trust there you go communication was actually identified in the report as one of the top operation issues for drivers with over half of drivers indicating slow or no responses were to blame there you go send a message to your company and they don't respond ask a question they don't respond that's very important when there's a lack of trust drivers feel like fleet managers won't do anything to solve their problems Fleet managers should avoid empty promises. There you go. And in personal recruiting and onboarding process that made drivers feel like truck unit numbers rather than individuals. That's right. Some of the mega fleets, mega carriers, you call them into your fleet manager or your dispatch or whatever you want to call them these days and say, this is so-and-so, say your name. They say, I don't care about your name, what's your number? So it's not about a name, it's all about numbers. That's how impersonal a large carrier like that can be. Because drivers don't have frequent or in some cases any face-to-face -face contact with their managers, respectful communication is key. Yes, yes, respect. If the driver has a question, answer respectfully. Don't be a smart butt. Don't yell at the driver, whatever. Just answer and do the best you can to help that driver. Now, that works both ways. You can't call your fleet manager, dispatcher, and start yelling and screaming, which I've kind of been known to do that a few times or two, but you can't do that. Respect works both ways. You can let a driver know why their loads are being planned the way they are and to relieve frustration. There, I agree with that one also. 
to let the driver know the process instead of just saying, no, we don't have anything for you right now. Well, what are you doing? What is the process? Are you waiting to get me somewhere else to get another load to another area, a better area or what? Let me know. You can control how quickly you respond to a driver and make them feel more respected. There you go. I agree. Keep investing in recruiting and retention. It takes the company twice as long to rebuild its driver pipeline and twice the budget to catch up after cutting off its recruitment branding investment. In a slowing economy, and there's a tendency for companies to lose sight of the importance of drivers. The driver is the backbone of the company. Without the driver out there in the trenches delivering the loads, making them income coming into that company, all the office people wouldn't exist. So you got to have the truck driver out there. That's how the company makes money. Cutting recruitment and retention, however, is not the way to go. Consistent investment in technology, especially when the market is soft, is vital to keep the momentum going so companies can attract drivers when it matters most. Come on, man. You don't... I understand the technology these days, but get out there hands-on with the drivers. Talk to them. Have a meeting with some drivers that are on the yard once a week. Whatever drivers are taking a break on the yard, go out, get everybody together, feed them lunch, Subway, whatever, and um, have a sit down. See what that driver's concerns are and everything else. And uh, investing in people is just as important as technology. When companies say retention is everybody's job, this can also mean it's nobody's. Getting serious about reducing turnover seems means hiring personnel whose sole responsibility is retention. The companies are most successful in PDA's retention programs are those who have a person or a team that is in charge of retention. When the PDA team earns identifies a driver who is frustrated or who is not happy. We escalate that driver to the retention person, then they spring into action to address a driver's need. Last article from Freight Waves there. You go check it out if you want to. I skip a couple paragraphs here and there just for time. But I said I would say what my top three things about driver retention. It's not rocket science, people. Come on. Number one. Probably the most important is pay. Pay, good mileage pay, or however the company pays, mileage percentage, be above average, <laughs> what the, the big mega carrier pays or whatever. Try to be better. But I know basically the mega carriers and everything pay basically the same. I think I said basically three times in one sentence. We're going to stop that. Respect. Respect the drivers. Sure. Like I said, respect is worth both ways. So you give what you get, you get what you give. But respecting the drivers, don't treat them like a seat warmer. Don't treat them as a number. Learn their name and treat them like that. Let's go back to the pay. Now I'm talking about retention pay. At like a shipper or receiver, give them an hour, give them two hours. After that, you go on the clock. So much hour, that will help out a lot too. Respect and decent equipment. You can't have some broke down trucks, it's unsafe. You gotta have good equipment, hopefully up to date equipment, but. These days, that's not that possible. So just take care of the equipment you have so the driver will be safe. If there are any issues with that equipment, if the driver will feel unsafe to drive, don't force them into driving. Get that thing to a shop. Get a road call vehicle out. Fix whatever is wrong and let the driver go safely on the road. So it's not rocket scientists. Or is it not rocket science to uh, keep 
retain drivers, in my opinion, the basic three things, pay, respect, decent equipment. You don't have to be 2023, 2024 trucks, decent, safe, reliable equipment. So let me know down in the comment section what y'all think about the driver retention thing. I appreciate everybody watching. Be sure to check out all the other videos. Everybody have a good day and stay safe.